I often get asked, why should I care about repo prompt in my workflow? What, what does it solve for me that I can't just do with prompting cloud code directly? Um, and I think to get to the essence of that, I'll do a little demo here and explain to you a little bit about what my thinking is through repo prompt, what it's doing for you, um, and why I think, you know, some of this organization, this prompt management, you know, is important still, even if you're not using ChatGPT or you're not using AI Studio and you're just using your agent directly, which totally fair. You know, I use Cloud Code a lot. I love it. Um, I use Codex a lot too. It's a great tool. Um, so before I kind of dive into that, I want to explain a little bit about what Repo Prompt is doing, how it assembles prompts, and why I think those things matter. Um, so let me move this here and this over here. Great. So I built a little visual demo uh, that kind of breaks down the anatomy of a prompt in Repo Prompt. Um, and at the start, you'll find the file tree. So at the heart of any task when you're working with an AI model, um, especially in related to coding, um, is that you need uh, you have a project and you need the model to understand a little bit about that project structure. So the file tree is a really token efficient mechanism uh, where you know we map through your repo and compress that down to just a list of files you know nested through. Uh, we don't repeat path elements because we can use ASCII. Um, we can encode some information like you know these are selected files. These ones have code maps. Um, great. Um, what this will do is it will allow the model to understand a lot about your project. You know what files exist. Oh, am I using Node versus Bun? Am I using uh, oh, I'm using TypeScript? Oh, I have my my CSS definitions here. Um, those are all important elements that if you don't provide them to the model or if you have a config file that's nested deep, uh, it won't know to look for it. And if you don't prompt it to find that file, it won't know that it's there and it might not solve your problem in a way that considers that file. So by giving the file tree, you're able to have the model able to understand about your code, like reason about your code base and understand you know what elements it needs to think about. Um, now, another thing that is interesting, and you'll be like, okay, well, you know, I can just use the ls command, you know, Claude can use it just fine. Oh, you know, sure. ls is a surface level representation of a folder. It'll give you, you know, your project root, your source, and you've got, you've got just a source and package. Okay, you can go recursive and find everything in there, but, you know, that's going to eat up a ton of token usage. Um, and in, in a mono repo, it's just untenable. There's just way too much stuff in there uh, that the model just won't be able to um, make sense of. So it'll have to kind of drill down and slowly find its way around, do some searches, wrap around, and then sort of find its way and kind of organize itself. The file tree skips all of that. You get the full repo kind of down. Um, and it's auto budgeted to a certain amount of tokens. Uh, so, you know, if you exceed that budget, which is around 10,000 tokens, um, it will drop down in resolution. So you can like limit depth uh, and then it can go ahead and limit to just folder structure um, and, and you're getting a, a much, you know, more compact representation of your repo without having to think about how many tokens is that representation taking up. So that's a file tree. Um, next, you know, we've got code maps, but I'll skip straight to file contents. Um, so if you've worked with Claude before um, and you have a large file, you'll notice that, you know, Claude will skip through different parts of your file. It'll, you know, search around read little bit, little chunks of your file. Sometimes it'll read the full thing, but in a really large one, that's too many tokens. So, you know, it, it won't read it. And, you know, as Claude is kind of reading and rereading files, you know, it's it's kind of getting, building redundant information and filling up its context window with kind of slices of your files, but never like the full picture. And why this matters is say that like you have a, a key function in your code that isn't being used, but like solves a key part of the problem. If Claude is just reading around there and never actually hits that function, it won't know it exists and it won't be able to use it and it might recreate it and you end up with a duplicate function. And that happens all the time. Um, so by having you know your full file contents kind of packed in your prompt there, that is avoided. But the problem is knowing which files to include and you don't want to include too many. Um, and so there's another thing that I've, I've sort of worked through and it's called code maps. And code maps um, use an AST representation. It extracts information from your from your files. And what it's able to do is uh, basically give the model the ability to understand at a high level how to use a function, how to use a class um, without having to read the whole thing. So, you know, this auth service has a login method, it has a logout method. Um, the login requires an email and password. Um, if it just saw login, it might not have known that email and password are required. Um, it might not know that this is an async method with a promise. Um, it might not know there's a refresh token. 
so instead of having Claude kind of hallucinate how to use the auth service, um, we can include a code map for it and it will just know how it is that it needs to work with it. And the way that we kind of get these included in a prompt is, you know, you might have the auth service referenced in your file contents. And as a result, it will just get pulled in automatically. Now, this isn't a perfect system, but um, I've built some good tooling in repo prompt to auto detect if you have a selected file, what are the required code maps that we need for the model to have a full picture of how to use that file. Um, and so that's what we've done here. So you've got the file tree, the code maps, the file contents. If you're doing a review, maybe you want a diff in there. You want to understand how things have changed since a certain branch. You know, where where, have we, where are we going? Um, I need to make these edits here. This stopped working. Um, the diff is a great tool that we can just include in the prompt and it'll give context to the model what changed and how to work with it. And what's great is we can filter it just for the files that we have selected and ignore the rest of the diff. So if I was working on another feature, um, we did a bunch of stuff. I don't care about the diff for that. I can just filter it down automatically, bring in just the diff of the files that I need to. Um, and then finally, we've got meta prompts. And meta prompts are a really key piece of um, content in a prompt uh, where basically you're going to need to specify to the model how you want it to respond, how you want it to answer, um, what kind of work do I need it to do? Okay, I need unit tests. You know, I want a certain amount of code coverage. Um, use this testing library. So, you know, we often have rules files, but you don't want basically too many rules to kind of always be cluttering your context window. So we can kind of just use the ones that we need, include them in a specific prompt, select them as we need. Great, we've got that sorted out. Um, and meta prompts are useful as well for just d having different workflows, which I'll get into a in a little bit. And then finally, of course, there's your task. Um, and that's just what we've gotten is at the bottom. So if you look through the whole prompt, we've got, you know, the file tree, the code maps, the file contents, the diffs, if we need, we don't need to always include these, um, the meta prompts and the instructions. And all of this together forms a concise, well-organized prompt that not only just has the task, but it has information about the task, the context in your repo. And it allows me to be a little bit less specific in what I'm writing. Um, you know, the authentication logic, like that's just a vague task, but I've included code maps for the auth service. I've included file contents where that is used. Um, the model can get right to work. It doesn't need to know everything about the repo. It doesn't need to search around. It knows because I've given it the information it needs. So that's super helpful uh, information for the model. You know, we can give it to it really easily. And repo prompt is really built around assembling prompts like this. Um, and from, from testing I've done, if you have a prompt like this, you will almost always get better results than if you just let the model find its way through, fiddle its way through and kind of solve things on its own. Like this is the job of an engineer over the next few years is organizing context. But what's great with repo prompt is that I don't have to do all this organization myself. Um, so I've got in this new presets uh, set up here. Um, and I didn't do any of the work of figuring out what files are related, but I've got this discover prompt. Now I've got several presets here. We can we have standard, plan, diff, follow up, all these workflows. Um, Discover is a workflow that I've added recently where that job of figuring out what a task entails can be done pretty easily. So I'm just gonna select it. Um, it's got the MCP discover prompt. The meta prompt is set to the discover feature. Repo prompt is connected over the MCP server to Claude code. I had just copied it. I'm gonna paste that in here, control, command B. Um, now it includes the the prompt the behavior prompt how to use the tools to solve this workflow um and it can just get to work so what does it do at the start it's reading the file tree i haven't included that in this prompt um because i it's connected to the tools it can read it for it um it's reading code structures so it's finding code maps um so it's able to very efficiently kind of find its way through all of the um the files that are related so let's just watch it work a little bit it's using the search tools um it's examining the key files. Okay, we've got nine files selected. So it selected the files that are relevant to the task. That was pretty quick. Um, so it just surfaced all of these files. We can see them already selected. Um, cool, it's reading some more files. As you can see, it was able to speed through those really quick. Repo prompts tools are quite rapid. Um, it's just getting a little bit more information there. And at the end, what should happen with the discover prompt, um, if all goes well, um, and sometimes Claude goes off the rails, is that it will update my prompt and make it a lot clearer for uh, the next model that's going to be implementing the work. Um, nope. So it did, I didn't want it to implement the work. Um, your task is to find context and write the discovery prompt. Please finish the discovery workflow and halt. So 
Claude Sonnet is what I'm using right now. It's not the smartest model, especially lately. It's been not the smartest. Um, so it's set set the selected files. Okay. Um, and crafting the handoff prompt, which it knows because I've included it. Okay, great. So we'll just pause it here. Okay, what did we get out of this? Um, so I've got the files that are related to this task. It isolated everything that we needed to touch. Uh, it basically clarified the task, wrote about relevant context, um, specified the key implementation points, um, and information about the architecture. Okay. So all of a sudden, I've got a, a task that is much clearer to an AI model reading it. It knows about all of these files. It has a directory structure included for these files here. It didn't have to search for them. Um, and now what I can do is switch over to MCP agent mode. I can hit clear. Um, so I've just cleared out the context and I can just include this in here. Um, now I've included in this prompt, the code maps, only the code maps for these files. And let's look a little bit at this. So the MCP agent, prompt, and this is what all the MCP uh, prompts do, is that because agents can read their own context, they can read files themselves, I don't want to necessarily include them all. Um, I've done the discovery work. Uh, so it's just going to include code maps for all of the files so I can keep token use low. Um, and then it will uh, include the behavior prompt, some of the file trees for the files that are selected. Um, and the model is able to just basically read what it needs, get straight to work, going straight to applying the edits that are required. Um, and just solving the problem. Um, now we can watch Claude kind of work its way through this problem in full. Um, you know, now you made a little mistake. It'll correct itself. Um, fixing, fixing that happens. Um, Claude's not perfect. Um, but you know, now it's able to basically go through all of the work that it needs to get done. Um, and then much faster than it would otherwise, it's able to solve the problem, um, with, with minimal, you know, intervention, uh, in between. Now, what is great with the discover workflow is that I have the task kind of cl clearly laid out for me. I can review it and I can look at it in repo prompt before I hand it off again to another model. Uh, and that's a really important piece. So I'm trying to find key points where you can stay involved, stay active and engaged uh, in your work uh, without just kind of delegating everything to the model and, and having key points where you can kind of decide what to do next, update things, clarify things and move on to the next. Um, there is another way to work though. Um, so the rest of the work here, um, um, can you switch to using the chat for the rest of the implementation? So what's cool here with Ripple Prompt is that it does include a fully featured chat system. Um, and what is, I think, really cool about the chat system in Ripple Prompt is that it efficiently organizes context in the way that we just went over. So every prompt message in Ripple Prompt will take all of this context um, and organize it and feed it to the model and groom out old context. So you can have really long chats in repo prompt. You can switch modes like plan, edit, uh, review, whatever you need. Um, and it will have all of the information it needs. The file contents are provided in full, like we've talked about how valuable that can be. Um, and it will just get to work on that. And you won't have lingering old versions of files in the chat that can distract the model. Uh, it's just got the latest information. So I'll put this back down. So what is happening here? So now I've got GPT-5 Pi kind of working through the problem. It's thinking through uh, the task and I can read what Claude did so far. Um, so it's set to pro edit. Um, it's basically saying I did all of these things, currently working on this, um, and it's able to complete the final step. So GPT-5 high reasoning is probably overkill for this task. Uh, it's just the final bit. But I just wanted to show a little bit about how um, the repo prompt tools can kind of work together and create emergent workflows. Um, and what I really like about these presets is that all of these can be customized and edited and you can build your own workflows with the tool set available to you here. I've created what I think are the most useful ones. These are the ones that I use. Um, but, you know, people have different things. Like some people want, I just want the chat to do a plan, have the full files for that and let my agent do the work. That's great too. Um, you know, you can have it set the task. I can go to plan mode and then I can copy this prompt and go into ChatGPT and have ChatGPT come up with a plan. You know, it's totally valid too. So on this side, you've got exports. On this side, you've got chats. I can send things over to the chat. Um, uses all the context I have configured here and we can get to work. Um, so this might take a while. Um, you know, five high things for a long time. But the nice thing with it is that it can just kind of get through all of the edits in the chat itself in one response. Uh, so it's able to reason for the full amount just on the problem 
write a concise answer and it could do, you know, multi-file edits in one shot. So that's a little tour of repo prompt of all the pieces that I think are important. And I hope that like this was helpful uh, in helping you understand a little bit about what is going on here. Now, I've, one last thing here, um, I've gotten some requests to understand, you know, what are the, what is going on in this side? So just so you know, uh, I can use the search box here. If I'm finding files, uh, I can select them. Um, I don't have any CSS in there, uh, .js, I can find, oh, yes, TypeScript project, great, all the TS files, I can, I can find, you know, the files related to what I'm searching for, um, obviously, you know, you can, there's a search tool with MCP, Claude can do a better job of searching, um, I can add different folders to this repo too, so I have a workspace, I can add multiple folders, if I have a relevant library, um, I can add that here as well, um, yeah, I can clear out the selection if I need to, um, and then, you know, there's some sorting and filters. So I support ignore files. You know, if you've got a git ignore, that's respected. So your build data and stuff is going to get removed. So that's a little bit about what these buttons are for. And I could leave the workspace if I need to. Presets are useful for having sets of files. So I can create a preset here. Um, shipping method. I can call that shipping method. And if I clear the selection here, I can just click that. And then all these files are reselected. So that's a really useful setup. So if you're working on certain features, you have these files related, you can create presets and kind of set that up. So... Hopefully that was clear. Uh, hopefully you get a better sense of what I'm thinking about when I'm building repo prompt. And hopefully, um, you know, you can join me on this journey and, you know, provide some feedback and, um, you know, we, together we can improve it. Now, one last thing again, when I'm, as I, as I kind of mentioned this, um, is that, uh, basically, um, basically one thing that is a little bit unfortunate with, um, having repo prompt kind of work with an agent like this is that, you know, you've got, you've got your, you, you, on one side, you've got, you know, the chat window, it's doing some work there. It's not an agent and you got an agent on the side. I'm going to bring these together and I'm hope you come with me on this journey as you know, everything is kind of integrated. We have everything kind of merged into one. Um, you're able to kind of talk to the app in natural language, do all of this work without thinking about all the buttons. The, the AI models are there for you to understand those things for you. So um, hope that helps. Hope um, this was a little bit of a better demo than some of the previous ones I've done. And uh, please let me know if you have any questions. All right. Thank you.